738 Nashville's morning news on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. How are you? All right. So Donald Trump came out with uh, his official abortion stance. I don't know why anybody's surprised by this. Now, number one, Trump knows that he basically can't win. Whatever he says, he's going to tick off some folks. But I think that ultimately he did the right thing. And just so you people know, I am passionately pro-life. But he did the right thing. Here's part of what he had to say. This was a video announcement yesterday while everybody was talking about the eclipse. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others. And that's what they will be at the end of the day. This is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. So a lot of folks wanted um, the the pro-life folks, which I am one, but they wanted him to come out with a support for some sort of a national or federal ban on abortion. Now, he got it down to the states, and that's something that he is very proud of. And if you are a constitutionalist, and, and that's part of being a conservative, in my opinion, then you understand that from a constitutional standpoint, this does belong at the state level. So this isn't real surprising that this was Donald Trump's announcement. And he's been I'm going to be honest with you. He's been saying this for, I mean, years now that this is one of his uh, proudest achievements is getting abortion sent back down to the states and uh, getting Roe versus Wade basically gone. And so to me, this is all very familiar because we spent a lot of time discussing this when he was in office the first time around. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest and life of the mother. You must follow your heart of this issue. But remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country which is currently and very sadly a nation in decline. Now, listen, the whole point is that last point is that last point that he made. You must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country. You must win elections to save our culture and our country. You see, Donald Trump very well knows that if he came out and he called for a national ban on abortion, that that would have a very negative impact on his run for re-election. It would. Like it or not, it would. And that is a message to Republicans that, in his view, the party does have to be somewhat moderate on this issue from a legislative standpoint because polling shows The further along in a pregnancy, the more Americans are uncomfortable with it. However, many Americans are okay with an abortion early on in a pregnancy. Like it or not, many Americans are. And so now you have some people who, again, wanted him to come out and and show support for this national abortion ban. You've got Mike Pence out there. You've got Lindsey Graham as well. There's a, a lot of fighting That is now going on within the Republican Party. I was surprised and disappointed. Marjorie Dannenfelser, the president of Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America, spoke to Trump on the phone this morning and thinks the door to a federal ban remains open. But I actually do think that he will get there. I really believe that because I believe that there was something that compelled him to stand strong and defend fearlessly every single Supreme Court justice that he put up. He never gave up on any of them i don't think he'll give up on this and so again the man understands that he's got to get elected ultimately donald trump wants to do what he believes is constitutionally correct and that is keep abortion at the state level and so i do believe that donald trump he he does understand several things he believes yes that it should be up to the states he also understands that from a political standpoint And some of y'all may disagree with me on this, but from a political standpoint, the Republicans simply will not ever have the votes in the Senate to force 
a national ban, period. They're not. And so for Trump, why go down this road of calling for a national ban when it's never going to come up politically if he ends up in office in the White House again? I just don't believe that it will. Now, Joe Biden and the Democrats, their reaction, quite predictable. Donald Trump just endorsed every single state ban on reproductive care nationwide. If MAGA Republicans put a federal ban on his desk, he'd sign it. Donald Trump is the reason Rose ended. If you reelect me, I'll be the reason why it's restored. So that is, of course, um, President Joe Biden. Doing his best Clint Eastwood, by the way. I've noticed that the older that Biden gets, the more Clint Eastwoody he he, uh, reminds me. Make my day. That's what he sounds like, Johnny. You're absolutely right. (laughs) Go ahead, punk. (laughs) It's what he sounds like. He sounds a lot like Clint Eastwood. So you got to be asking your question. Do I remember? (laughs) No. You know how much Democrats are spending on their pro-choice anti-Donald uh, Trump ads? $30 million in battleground states in ads related to abortion because they believe that this is a winning issue for them. Now, let's face it. And there's going to be there's I mean, people are dissecting the 2020 and 2022 election uh, cycles. I mean, that is never going to end. But you look at 2020 and 2022 presidential election and the midterms where this was a big issue abortion and you could be right when you say that abortion was indeed a major factor in the republicans and the loss at the presidential level and certainly uh, they didn't have as many victories as they thought that they would in uh, 2022 and the question is did abortion have uh, a, a big part of that i don't know Some people say yes. Other people say no. Me, I don't care. I think that it is where it belongs at the state level. Uh, This is more from Donald Trump in the announcement that he made yesterday on abortion. But we must win. We have to win. We are a failing nation, but we can be a failing nation no longer. We will make our nation great. We will make our nation greater than ever before. Yeah. And uh, again, part of the dynamic here is that uh, Trump knows that pro-lifers and evangelical Christians, there's absolutely no way that they will vote for Joe Biden. There's just no way. Donald Trump needs moderates. He needs independents and he needs women desperately. And so as uh, the leader of the pro-abortion, I should say pro-life group says, She's not giving up on Donald Trump yet. Maybe she's thinking that he gets into office and he changes his stance. And maybe he's just saying what he needs to say now to get elected. I don't know if that's true or not. But what I will say is that the fear and my fear is that the pro-lifers and the evangelical Christians, while I know that they won't vote for a Joe Biden, my worry is that they'll stay home. And in this election, and I've been telling you about, you know, some of the polling where Biden and Trump are getting closer and closer. Donald Trump literally needs every vote he can get. So he's trying to walk a very thin line. What do you think? Members Nutrition Super Text Line 615-737-9986. Did Donald Trump do the right thing politically? Because there's people like myself who are very pro-life, but they also understand why the president did what he had to do. I have offended and triggered the Clint Eastwood fans. Listen, I wasn't saying that they're alike in any other way. Right, right. All I'm saying is that Biden, in some of the more recent videos, he seems to be channeling his best Clint Eastwood. I love Clint Eastwood. But he fails at it horribly. He does fail at it horribly. Oh, Don, I think I'm hitting it right on the money. <laughs> I'm Clint. Oh, I know. Call me Clint Biden. All right, maybe I should apologize to Clint Eastwood. I'm sorry, Clint. Yeah, you may want to. <laughs> you know, there, there's an 80-something-year-old man who could really kick the living crap out of yours truly. Uh, make that about 90-something. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh he could still he could still whip some butt. You know, you know what? You know what an under the radar Clint Eastwood movie is? 
See, now i got to kiss Clint Eastwood's butt because I've offended the Clint Eastwood people. What is it, Brother Dan? Trouble with the Curve. You guys ever see Trouble with the Curve? Yeah. Oh, man. Johnny? Yes, sir. I underrated? love Clint Eastwood. Underrated or not? Underrated, yes. I love Trouble with the Curve. And I'm not even, not even all that big of a baseball fan anymore. But I just that's one of those movies that I will watch over and over and over again. Big El fan. Dorado, man. El Dorado. Gran Torino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gran Torino. Gran Torino. Not Torino. El Dorado. Gran Torino. Not oh, El Dorado. that was so love good. that movie. Although El Dorado with John uh, Je- uh, John Wayne was good. <laughs> that was good. You wouldn't want to mess with John Wayne either, Brother Dan. You can't go well, on you know, with John that, Wayne or Clint Eastwood. The, the Eagles song that they that they sang about that was really good. El Dorado. El Dorado. <laughs> Say, I got you, didn't I? Touche, brother. I got you. Touche. El Dorado. <laughs> I know it's Desperado. <laughs> I, well, I know. You're, you're getting back at me. You're getting back at me, Brother Dan. All right, 749 on Nashville's Morning News. Courtney Johnston challenging U.S. Uh, Representative Andy Ogles in a GOP uh, primary for the fifth. This is what she has to say. Johnson sharply criticizing Ogles while outlining her own conservative credentials in a formal campaign announcement. She says, and this is a quote, I support President Trump. I am pro-life. I'm for immediately securing the border and fully funding law enforcement, Johnson says. Andy Ogle says that he believes all of that, too, but he's a totally ineffective politician who's getting nothing done. He hasn't passed a single bill into law. We need a real conservative leader, she says, who will deliver results, not a do-nothing grandstander who just chases headlines. That's why I'm running. So I get the feeling that Courtney Johnston doesn't like Andy Ogles. We all? All right. <clears throat> Johnston and Ogles will battle it out in the uh, August 1st GOP primary. And uh, <clears throat> there's some other folks running as well. Now, I talked about this before. And some folks got mad at me. Somebody gave me, you know, the little applause emoji. But there's some ah. folks out there that are supporters of Andy Ogles who, who just, they're really angry. And they're mad at me because what I said is, you know what, Courtney Johnson, bring it. I mean, listen, this will be, we'll have to wait and see, but she, I I just, I have a feeling she may be more moderate than Andy Ogles. Once we get her on the air, I'm going to ask her all kinds of questions to sort of find out exactly where she is. You know, it's interesting because when she says that she is a pro Donald Trump, that she supports Donald Trump. Well, you got all these outlets, including our friends at the Tennessee Star, and I'm and I'm, I like those folks over there. Um, they're reporting that there's this group, the Best of Tennessee Action Fund, and they're ra- raising money for her run. That's what they're reporting, and the accusation is that. This is a a moderate organization. They cannot stand Donald Trump, actually. And it's full of a bunch of never Trumpers. And, you know, Tennessee Star made it out to be they're sort of like the Lincoln Foundation. Now, you know, the Lincoln Foundation, they're supposedly Republicans. But in reality, I don't believe that they are. But they can't stand Donald Trump. And so some are comparing this, the best of uh, Tennessee Action Fund, to this Lincoln Project And so the question is, okay, so Courtney Johnston, if you do support President Trump, help us understand if this, and I'm going to put this in air quotes, dark money, they're all about being anti-Donald Trump. Well, then, is there any truth to a concern that the people behind you are anti-Donald Trump? And quite frankly, does it matter? I think that's part of the discussion. They say the treasurer of this organization, the best of Tennessee, is a guy who has donated to the likes of Mitt Romney, Nikki Haley, John McCain, George W., Nikki Haley, and uh, Ron DeSantis. Never to Donald Trump. And And here's the other thing that I would ask, and I don't know the answer to this question. Maybe some of you folks who are far, far smarter at politics than I am. But if she says that she supports Donald Trump, but the money behind her seems to be or is reported to be anti-Donald Trump people, 
Well, then, what can you surmise from all that? All of that? Do you believe that she is genuine when she does say that she supports Donald Trump? Or is she saying what she needs to do to get elected? I don't know. I've said this many times now. I'm, I like uh, Courtney Johnson. I also like Andy Ogles. And I also like that the good people of the fifth are going to have a choice, perhaps, between somebody who is moderate, Courtney Johnson, at least that's what people are saying about a, her run, and Andy Ogles, who I believe is very conservative, and his votes have uh, brought that fact out, that I believe that Andy Ogles is conservative, but it is well within her right to challenge Ogles for the fifth. And, you know, if she wants to do that, I applaud her for it. 